And welcome back to Mr. Gregoris Math. So today I'm going to take a look at showing you some features on your TI-84 calculator that are particularly useful with respect to binomial expansions. So first things first, when you get your calculator on a test, it will be at this RAM cleared menu. If you want to see what that looks like, simply press second function plus for memory and then seven to, to uh, clear one for all RAM and two to reset. And so this resets your calculator to the exact same mode you're gonna get it when you get a test. So we're going to use primarily some of the features from the list option, which are in the stat button, and uh, some of the stat features as well too. That's gonna be useful when we do some expansions. <clears throat> so first, let's take a look at a possible expansion here. So consider maybe something like 3x minus 2y uh, to the power uh, 16. So this would be a very ugly expansion to do using um, the binomial theorem. Um, but the nice part is we have this kind of methodology to get to it. So we, we have our formula uh, from k equals 0 to n of n choose k. And then it's our first term whatever our first term is, to the exponent n minus k, and our second term, whatever our second term is, to the exponent k. So that's the formula we're going to be working with n. Now, um, in your calculators, you can't really add the values of x and y here, um, but what you can do is you can create a list of all of the coefficients, and if you just remember that your exponents count down for x and up for y, you can very quickly expand this using the help of your calculator. Let's see how that's done. So first things first, I'm going to press stat so that it brings me to my edit menu. And then that's going to bring up all of my possible lists. So here in L1, what I'm going to look to do is I'm going to look to put the numbers 0 through 16. And that's because I start at 0 and I'm going up to n equals 16. Now I can take the time to enter in 0 and then 1 and then 2 and then 3 and 4 and enter them all. Or I can go up so that L1 is highlighted and click enter so that it gives me an option to type in a value for L1. Now I'm going to access list, which is directly above stat. So I'll press second function stat to access list. And I'm going to go over to ops for operations. Now the operation I want to do is I want to add a sequence in. So I'm going to go to five for sequence. And my expression and variable are just simply going to be the variable values X and X. And I'm going to start it at zero and it at 16, and my step is going to be one because it's going up each time. Now, when I press paste, it's gonna fill in all the stuff I need to go ahead and, um, and, and put in um, all the values from zero to 16 there. Now, if you don't have that wizard that I was working with, when you type in sequence, it just asks you to type in a cadence like this. So you can type X and then using the comma, you can separate each of these values. But if you have a newer calculator, it comes loaded with the wizard. Pressing enter and you'll see we have the numbers 0 through 16 and they're all there. 0 through 16. Cool. So now we'll scroll over to L2. And in here, I want to put in all of the choose notation. So my choose notation is n choose k. So I'm going to go up to L2 just like I had done with L1. I'm going to hit enter so it gives me something to work with here and I'm going to use my choose notation. So that's under alpha F2. So alpha window, and that will get me eight for NCR. And that's the chooses, so that's N choose R items. So now I wanna choose from 16 and I want whatever number occurs beside it. So in the first column, I want 16 choose zero. In the second column, I want 16 choose one. So in here, I'm gonna press second function, one to pull up L1. And when I hit enter, you'll see I have a list of all of the chooses of 16. And they get quite large as we get to the middle, like I was talking about in class. Um, but you can see it's symmetrical and they count back down to one. So that's actually all of my coefficients. Well, at least all of the part of my coefficients that come from this choose notation. But this three is also raised to the power n minus k in each term. And this negative two is also raised to the power uh, b to the k. Um, so it's raised to k as well. So I'm going to go ahead and type in in here uh, under L3, 
I'm going to type in my coefficient raised to the power of the row that it's on. So uh, watch how that works. So in L3, I hit enter. My coefficient is 3. I'm going to raise it to the power of 16 minus L1. Because remember, 16 is my value of n, and L1 is my value of k. And so those are all of my possible exponents are my values. And you'll notice in the table, it shows it in scientific notation, so with E7. But it actually gives me the value here uh, in non-scientific notation. And I'll do the same thing for L4. But I'm going to do this for L4 with my negative 2 value. So this would be negative 2. Oh, I should put it in brackets because I'm raising the negative to that power as well, too. To the power, and this one is just L1. And so these are going to count up. So my L3 counts down and my L2 counts up, just like my exponents from uh, 3 and 2 work. Okay, now we'll go over to L5, and this is where we're going to put it all together. Because remember, to find the coefficient, it's going to be this term times the numerical portion of this term times the numerical portion of this term, and that will be my first coefficient of x to the power of 16. So L5 is going to contain the product of L2, L3, and L4. So I'll just go up into L5, and I'll type L2 times L3 times L4, and it should fill that up with my coefficients. So my first coefficient, again, it's in scientific notation in the table, but I can go ahead and see it down here. So I actually have 43 million 400, or sorry, and 46,721 x to the power 16. And I can scroll down and write out every single one of my coefficients. And notice that they alternate from positive to negative. And so there's going to be a whole bunch of terms here. But then when k is equal to 7, I'm going to have this term negative, well, it's a huge number, uh, 3, 6, 28 billion, 822 million, 210,560. And my x value is going to have an exponent of, well, 16 minus 7. So that's going to have an exponent of 9. And my y value is going to have an exponent of 7. Because remember, these two always add 9 plus 7 adds to 16. So in this way, I can go about calculating all of my coefficients of an entire expansion. I could list the whole thing out if I wanted, or I could just say which ones I wanted to find. Um, so this is a unique way to use your table, uh, so that that way you can find your coefficients. Now, you can do this all in one step. And you could say, okay, well, in this table, I'm going to type in all of these components multiplied together and just have L5. Um, that is another way to do it. Um, and I'll show that perhaps on a second video. Well, you know what? I'll just show it right now, right here. So I'm going to clear out my lists and I'm going to go back up to this one. And under L2, I'm going to try and put it all together. So I'm going to do and choose K. So that's going to be from alpha F2 for my choose notation. My n value is 16, and my k value is L1. And then I'm going to raise 3 to the power, and it's going to be 16 minus L1. And then I'm going to raise negative 2 to the power, and it's going to be just L1. And we should see that same coefficient of 43,046,721. And again, just scrolling down until we had an exponent of uh, uh, 7 on y, because remember our k value is our y exponent, we have the same number. So we can do the whole thing in one fell swoop. Now the nice part about doing the whole thing in one fell swoop is a common question you ask is, find the sum of the coefficients. So for us to find the sum of the coefficients, we'd actually have to calculate all of these and add them up. Fortunately, your calculator has a sum tool built right into it. You don't have to delete anything here, just as long as you remember which column had your coefficients. So in this case, L2 has our coefficients. We'll press second function and mode to get back to our main calculator screen. And I'm gonna go back into that list situation. And I'm gonna find the operation that allows me to add things. So I'll go second function list, and I'll scroll over to math. 
So under math, you'll see option five is sum. And so I'm gonna select sum by typing five, and I'm gonna sum all of the elements of L2. So I'll just put L2 in brackets and I'll sum all them up. So they'll all add up and holy smokes, wouldn't you look at it? If you add up every single one of those coefficients, you get to a value of one. Now, why does that make sense? Well, it makes sense because of the fact that we have alternating signs and they get larger and smaller and they probably get larger and smaller according to some sort of pattern. It also makes sense because there's a theorem that connects the sum and product of coefficients of a binomial expansion. But we'll leave that lesson for another day. I just wanted to show you that trick of how to find the sum of the coefficients. So let's recall what we were able to do. We were able to create a list. We were able to sum a list. We found where the NCR function is in the calculator and we were able to um, fill in coefficients. So I'd say that's a pretty good swing at some of our binomial expansion questions from here. Join us next time and I will perhaps give some tips on calculator use for solving logarithmic equations. Uh, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, ring that notification bell, and as always, uh, double check your signs on your calculations.